What has China been up to exactly? Their economy has notably slowed down as confirmed by unofficial as well as official statistics. Now a new report has surfaced which estimates extremely slow growth even by global standards. Don't worry about it getting around though. China has completely censored it from their internet. GDP growth problem solved. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to talk about China. We're going to look at this report that has come out. I want to show you what's happening with manufacturing as well. A lot to cover today, so let's begin by taking a look at that report. This information is coming out of the Financial Times. Of course, the links will be in the description if you want to check out the sources for yourself. Nervous markets. How vulnerable is China's economy? A relatively obscure economics professor at Renmin University in Beijing sparked a minor furor last month when he claimed a secret government research group had estimated China's growth in their GDP could be as low as 1.67% in 2018, far below the officially published rate of 6.7% for the year up to September. This information is not coming from some random website on the internet, not coming from some random analyst. We are talking about an economics professor in Beijing. Most experts dismiss the speech as implausible despite long-standing doubts about the reliability of China's official GDP data, yet although discussions of his claims was quickly scrubbed from the Chinese internet, the presentation has been viewed more than 1.2 million times on YouTube, an indication that the raw nerve he touched with his doom-laden warnings. Now you know when they are promoting this type of information out there and it starts to spread far and wide, the government's going to have their eyes peeled and they're going to wipe that off. They have the ability to do that and so they do every single chance they get. A decade ago, China played a vital role in rescuing the world economy from the financial crisis by launching an unprecedented 4 trillion renminbi stimulus program. Today, the fear in markets is the opposite. Already unnerved about rising rates in the US and slowing growth in Europe, many investors now worry that China could lead the global economy into the next recession. China is a very important country globally. They are expecting China to grow forever and ever never a slowdown is allowed in this country apparently so they have every reason to push this higher and eliminate any possible signs of slowdown this article is fantastic if you want to look at the details for yourself in exactly what's happening within China I'll show you a couple charts from here but if you want to know the ins and outs of what's happening at least the surface level information then this is the article to look at it's pretty long but it's detailed a lot of facts in here. Let's get into some charts. China's economy is slowing, real growth in GDP, annual percentage change. You can see basically ever since the financial crisis, this has been slowing down. They claimed in the article it was 6.7. If I look on here, I'm seeing closer to 6%. I don't know what number to use. Is it 1.67? Is it 6%? I remember back when the GDP growth was over 7% on the official statistics, there were several reports coming out that it was probably closer to 3 three to four percent so now it's probably even lower and that 1.67 percent it is believable as far as I'm concerned but I don't know what the official stats are I really don't know and personally doesn't even matter we can look at other indicators that really tell us what's happening so let's move on. Key indicators point to worsening Chinese slowdown, annual percentage growth monthly. We're looking at fixed asset investment, retail sales, and industrial production. All of these have been slowly but surely slowing down. Over the years, the stimulus has picked up, but the growth has slowed down. And the way it works is that you put a dollar in, whether that's through some sort of stimulus program from the government, whether that's from the monetary stimulus that the central bank can provide or any other method, it doesn't equate to one dollar of productivity. That's not the way it works. So they learn the hard way and of course the worse this becomes, the worse it will become. That's just the way it is. It always is a self-fulfilling prophecy that unfortunately isn't going to be good for the future of China. Now saying that, I'm not suggesting for a second that the very long-term growth potential of China isn't excellent. They have come a long 
long way in the past few decades. Their growth will far surpass where they are today. But to suggest that they're not going to be some bumps along the way, that's being very naive. So let's move on. Rise in debt limits Beijing space for stimulus. You're looking at the debt as a share of the GDP in terms of percent, and whether that's household, government, or corporate, all of these have increased quite a bit, bringing that over 250%. Corporate debt seems to be a very big problem, and it wouldn't surprise me to suggest that the catalyst for the next crisis could come from this corporate debt. It's not just in China, of course. We're seeing that problem exist all across the world. This happens to be just one country that is unfortunately dealing with a massive roadblock today. Many people have suggested that China is essentially colonizing Africa. This tells you some information about their expansion throughout Africa. Chinese loans to African governments. You're seeing this here, whether it's Zambia, Cameroon, Sudan, Congo, Kenya, Ethiopia, Angola. All of these have increased year over year over year. There are billions of dollars in projects taking place every single day. There's something new happening and they're expanding. I'm not suggesting that they're trying to take over the continent or anything, but they have absolutely expanded such a great degree and they are becoming partners in many ways. Yes, we've seen them taking over certain things after their debts weren't paid, but they're not the only country to do that. I see the expansion accelerating over the next few decades. There's no doubt about that. They have become great partners. While the West may shun Africa, China is basically going head first into this and they're going to be the victors as a result. They're going to be able to pursue projects that make them a lot of money and give them excellent partnerships in places where other countries don't seem to want to touch. Manufacturing is slowing down globally. We know this. And despite the statistics that we've seen just recently, I don't believe some of the data that we're being presented with. But regardless, you know, if you take a look at the PMI, whether it's Euro, as I'm showing you here, whether it's coming out of China, whether it's coming out of any country, this happens to be a point in time in which the economic indicators have piled up over and over again, showing us weakness and slowdown. The data is in and it is showing a slowdown. This is basically from a report. I'll show you just right here. You can see purchasing managers index looking at the chart on the right hand side. I can zoom in if that makes it easier to see. You're basically looking at the slowdown taking place right now. We're looking year over year and obviously this is going to be a problem. Actually, it's quarter over quarter in this chart, but we are finding that this data has piled up in the Eurozone. We are looking at different areas really, really slowing down heavily. If I can zoom out and just show you for a second whether we are looking at Germany at a 66 month low, France at a 49 month low, as well as Ireland, Spain and Italy all a few months low as well. So that just gives us an idea of where we're at today in the Eurozone. That's not good because the manufacturing base services as well. These are important factors to an economy. We have to be able to grow at a certain level if you want to have more jobs being created, more people working, more people buying things, more people going to the restaurants, more people active, they're doing things, not just staying at home, putting their money into their mattress. The economy needs to have that current currency and be able to keep everything going. That's not Europe right now. I could tell you that very much. China is slowing down in many ways as well. The US, Canada, the UK, all these countries right now are slowing down. They're uncertain. They're holding off. But we see certain statistics that have looked positive. But if you really understand what happens, and I want to make a video entirely about this. If you've been in the business world, you've seen these big corporations and you were involved in it, especially in the financial industry. Industry. back in, let's say, 2007, 8, and 9, you would know exactly the way it happens. I saw this with my own eyes, where you look at these corporations, bigger and bigger and bigger. They're getting huge. They're expanding. They're hiring at the fastest pace you've ever seen. The construction that's going on, the expansion that's going on, buying this, buying that, whining and dining, parties and events and conferences, and everything's happening. And then out of nowhere, it's turned upside down. Immediately, there's 
there's layoffs. Okay, we got to worry about this. We're firing this group. We're going to conserve. We're going to stop all this. Everything is canceled. Cancel the construction. Cancel the expansion. Get rid of that group of people. Consolidate that group of people. And suddenly you have this wild turn of events that nobody was prepared for. It always happens at the absolute peak. When things look like they're better than ever, suddenly everything changes. I want to make a video entirely about that. Have a little rant. So we're looking at the PMI for different countries, whether it's the uh, US, Japan, China, as well as the Eurozone, all of them have come down in 2018. I'll just show you right here. This line here is 2018, just to give you an idea. And since that point, all of them have fallen. So that should give us a general perspective on what's happening, not just one country, not just two, but of course we're seeing it generally happening globally. We're seeing a slowdown in real estate that is going on everywhere from Sydney, Australia to Vancouver, Canada. It's happening today. It's happening now. It's not a future event. It's happening now. I get questions all the time. When's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? It's happening now. It's happening right in front of your very eyes. And it happens to completely correlate with quantitative tightening. I've said it a hundred times. And every single time I look in the comment section, there's always a few people who are saying, why are you saying this? Why are you predicting that? Why are you saying this? Well, all you need to know is that I've correlated quantitative tightening with the slowdown in the economy and it has matched up perfectly. Is it because I'm some sort of oracle? No, absolutely not. I don't know anything. I'm not a smart individual. I don't know anything about anything. But what I do know is what I can see and what I can prove. And that information is being presented to us right now. They pushed it up with something. If you take it away, obviously it's going to come down. I don't need to be smart to figure that out. I'm not smart. And I know that you are smarter than me. You can figure this out and you can be able to determine where things are heading. So I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. And last but not least, if you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need. If you want to check them out, there's a link in the description. It's going to take you over to Amazon and that will allow you to flip through the pages of the books for yourself. If you want the audiobook version, you can get that at themoneygps.com.